Hello friends in the ICT multiverse. As programmers, sometimes when you're doing coding, you look at your graphical user interface, check. You look at your code, no issues found. You look at that particular code when you're debugging, zero errors. When you test your database connection, it's perfect. But you still get this dreaded error of object and linking and embedding 4.0 provider is not registered on the local machine. This thing can frustrate you. And so before you quit that application and you're frustrated and you're feeling like, oh my God, why is my code not working? What could be the problem, right? At that particular moment, you feel like you want to scream and tear everything apart. And you can find out that actually it's just uh, a minor error. And if you follow these three steps that I'm going to show you, you'd be amazed how solving this issue is quite easy. Uh, follow me and you'll be able to solve it. Welcome back. For those who are wondering what is this object linking and embedding uh, thing that we are talking about, uh, well, OLEDB uh, 4.0 is just an API from Microsoft that we normally use to connect um, our data that we collect from our forms, uh, especially the ones made in .NET framework. And uh, this particular API is useful. It works with uh, databases such as MySQL and uh, not just SQL databases, but Access and uh, maybe Oracle. I've never tried Oracle, but I think it does. So what's going on in, uh, with this particular code? Well, this is just a code that I've attached to a command button called store. And if you look at my design for the form, uh, I've got a couple of text boxes. The store button I'm talking about is right here. Well, uh, I've got a couple of text boxes, option boxes, uh, combo boxes, my date picker is there, and checklist, uh, check boxes. Well, uh, now, this particular data, uh, this particular line, uh, I've commented it out because this is uh, what I'll be using eventually to collect data. But right now I'm just uh, testing uh, the connection between uh, my application and the database. And I'll be entering this particular two values directly, directly into my database. Currently, if you look at my database, it's empty, it's blank. And uh, if I try to run this particular application right now, and it will throw that particular dreaded error that I was talking about. And this particular error can be solved using this particular three steps. Step number one, ensure that your database connection is accurate. And you can refresh that particular connection by going to tools, connect to database, and uh, tell Microsoft um, .NET uh, which type of data source you want to use. So we've got data sources. Uh, I've talked of Access, uh, SQL, ETC, and Oracle. So uh, I'm going to use Access for purposes of simplicity. So I'll click OK over there and browse where my database is. That is my database is called PartDB. I've saved it in an old Access format. I don't need a password. So if you test that particular connection, it's working perfectly. And check your machine whether you need uh, JET or ACE, right? So this one is 4.0, this is 12.0. So it depends whether you're running a 32-bit uh, operating system or a 64-bit operating system. Once you've confirmed that, um, this particular piece of code, we are using it to point to that particular connection in our code right here. So it's very, very important. Ensure that you as much as um, exactly uh, the right path where your database lies. Now, once that one is done, once that one is done, the next thing is uh, to set up your project um, properties. Ensure that uh, during compile, 
uh, when you're compiling your code, if I go to advanced, yeah, if I go to advanced, ensure that uh, all your settings uh, are the same for trace and debug, then uh, your application uh, as well, ensure that your target framework is 4.7, uh, at least 4.7, and uh, last but not least, um, let us look at advanced compile options. I think I've been there. Our target CPU, yeah, right. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, even though if you look at my uh, Windows 11, I'm running um, a 64-bit operating system, but sometimes .NET doesn't just get it. Um, Sometimes I, 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 myself, I wonder, okay, what's going on? Because um, if you look at my system, I'm running a 64-bit operating system. And my thinking is I sh my target CPU should be a 64-bit operating system. But that is not the case. You have to change this to uh, a 32-bit. Why? Why are we changing that? We're changing that uh, depending on the kind of access database engine that we have installed so i'm going to leave this particular link uh, of access database engines from microsoft it's free of charge you can click here and select um, whichever whichever works for your system it's very small lightweight this is just 25 mbs uh, click that and ensure that uh, you update your access engine once that is done um, this will depend. Uh, so for mine, even though I'm running 64-bit CPU, um, my access engine is 32-bit. So I'll leave it at 32-bit. Now, once those changes have been made, this time around now, if I run, if I run um, my application, you'll realize that it won't, it won't throw that particular error. And uh, despite the fact that I've tried and caught the error, um, I get this wonderful message that tells me that your record is saved. And this is exactly what we wanted. Now let us check if my record uh, are in that particular database. So if I refresh this, um, you can see I've got one record there that I've inserted manually through the code. So uh, once I've confirmed that our application is working okay now you can continue and insert this uh, take the uh, inputs directly from the user because now we've established that the connection between our application and our database is correct and i'm happy well if you love this video please ensure that you like it you subscribe and if you know of other methods or that you can use to solve this error please let me know down in the comments below see you next time